Welcome to the X Corner. I'm still adding that mutation to the superhero crew. I'll be covering the X Comics for the week of June 19th, 2019. This week we have three comics. Age of X-Men Next Gen number 5. Age of X-Men The Amazing Nightcrawler number 5. And Uncanny X-Men number 20. Spoilers, of course. We'll start with Age of X-Men Next Gen number 5, written by Ed Brisson and art by Marcus Toe. Soul and Noel blew up the library, but he isn't all bad since he evacuated everyone first. Armor, Rock Slide, and Glob find him, but before they can escape, Department X shows up to arrest them. They run and eventually evade the inept, most powerful mutant cops. They are on the run, and Glob has a plan to prove that this world isn't real. He tells his tale that he's always known this world was fake, but doted to sanity, until people started disappearing, and no one would remember them. His plan is to find the life seed on the beach in Canada where the final confrontation between the X-Men and X-Man happened. This would be proof for everyone else that what they remember is wrong. They get to the beach and search but find nothing. They are so dejected that when the X-Men show up they just surrender. They find themselves in another prison complex and Glob falls to ultimate despair when Armor tries to introduce herself to him like they'd never met. He runs to his cell and starts his diary all over again. Well, that was a downer ending, but at least it actually wrapped up this miniseries. It was a sad end to these young heroes. They risk everything and fail. Luckily this was all for nothing, so their loss is transitory. That was the main problem with this ending. It would have hit way harder if I actually felt these poor kids were screwed, even for a little while. Instead, I know after Age of X-Men Omega, they'll be all reset or maybe erased from existence. This story in the grand scheme means nothing, thanks to the nature of the event. Still, for downer ending, it was good, and I appreciate the total uselessness of attempting to change the world, so we'll give it a 7.5 out of 10. Then there's Age of X-Men The Amazing Nightcrawler number 5, written by Shannon McGuire, art by Juan Fergari. Nightcrawler's surrounded by mind-controlled mutants, and Megan is stuck thinking she's his mother. Not the best way to start your day. He grabs the little girl and the cuckoo behind it all, and go to the roof to talk. He accuses her of betraying everything he's done for her and her sisters, and she throws it in his face that he left the other sister with Mastermind. She explains how hard it is to be linked to, to her sisters so fully in a world where relationships are banned. She shows him all the times before when he and Megan fell in love and went looking for his daughter. And she says that the love transcended their mind wipes no matter what. Nightcrawler then remembers he has to go save Megan and teleports down to fight the mutant mob. He grabs Megan and teleports her to the rafters and drops her to snap her out of her transformation. She changes back into Megan's form, and Nightcrawler teleports them both to the roof. Nightcrawler decides to turn himself over to the Cuckoos so that his daughter and Megan go free. They relent to his demands, and Nightcrawler allows them to mind wipe him once more. He then holds a press conference to introduce his new leading lady, totally forgetting about what he felt for Megan. And Megan and his daughter are on the run. Well, another downer ending. This one is even worse since it's so tragic that Nightcrawler had to give up everything he loved so that they could be free. Once again though, it doesn't matter, but this time the emotional trauma might just carry over if the X-Men even keep any of their memories going back to the real world. It could be interesting since Megan is happily married to Captain Britain and has a child with him. Unfortunately I have a feeling any continuity we currently love might be out the window with the reboot, but I could still wish. 7.5 out of 10. Lastly, of Uncanny X-Men number 20, written by Matthew Rosenberg, art by Salvador La Roca. The X-Men are jumped by four of their greatest enemies, Fabian Cortez, Shinobi Shaw, Sienna Blaze, whoever that is, and Fitzroy. They seem to be just trying to kill the X-Men as usual, but it's soon revealed that they're doing it for self-preservation, since they see the X-Men as a hit squad out killing other mutants. Which they are, but they don't know that. The X-Men beat the bad guys, obviously, but Shaw is so scared to be taken by the X-Men to their masters, he kills himself. Back at the base, Dark Beast has cured the mutant vaccine. He used his super evil science to create a cure to the cure. He uses Banshee to crop dust the world, and the vaccine is fixed. Or so they think. Back with Wolverine and Kwanin confronting Emma, she calls her Hellfire goons to distract Wolverine so they can get away. There's a cool Kwanin and Mystique fight where Mystique keeps changing into the best fighters and finally finds Kwanin's weakness when she shifts into the ninja Psylocke. She gets a stab in on Kwanin. Wolverine is doing fine against the Hellfire goons until Owen E shows up and uses flamethrowers on him. Captain America confronts Cyclops with Dr. Nemesis in tow, 
He is pissed that the X-Men cured the vaccine, and it seems like he's being fascist cap, but it turns out, in some cases, the cure kills mutants that get vaccinated. Cap isn't happy, but neither is Cyclops, who's been duped by Dark Beast. He also finds out that the Cap he's been interacting with and giving prisoners to has been an impersonator. Double whammy. They grab Dr. Nemesis and Magic teleports them to confront Dark Beast. He thanks them for being so gullible, he's proud that he was successful in stopping the vaccine since even the most racist person won't chance killing their child to vaccinate them. Magic has heard enough and teleports Dark Beast half into the ceiling decapitating him. Cyclops and Havoc are shocked, but before they could say too much, Dr. Nemesis chimes in that he may be able to help the mutants affected by the tainted vaccine. Just then, Cyclops gets a psychic call from Emma. She returns all his memories to him and begs for his help to stop O.N.E. Oh, that dark beast. He did imply that there was some subtle psychic manipulation going on, so you can't blame Cyclops too much for trusting him. Magic has jumped way up on the scales for her dealing with dark beasts, though. They come this far, and I believe... The attempted genocide of kids deserves a teleportation decapitation. I also love that Dr. Nemesis is back. He's a Warren Ellis character that's far too good to have disappeared for so long. I think people were afraid to use him so as not to raise the ire of Ellis. He's not as sarcastic and caustic as usual, but I'll take it. They're setting up the final confrontation between the X-Men and O and E, so I'll be glad to see that. I hope Magic teleports them all into ceilings. This one gets an 8 out of 10 for decapitation! Well, it was a short week, but next week makes up for it with 6 books, of which most are ending a series, so gird your loins for that one. I'm already doing my mantras and goat yoga in preparation. See you next week.